So to start us off looking at our future uh, funding for the second uh, tranche, uh, please welcome Professor Rachel Taylor for the Healthy Weight theme. Kia ora. Kia ora and thanks very much, Gail. Uh, just to start off with, I'd just like to say if any of you have got a little post-lunch slump, need to have a wee nap, uh, wearing my sleep hat, that's absolutely fine because it's World Sleep Day, all right? So you go for it. <laughs> Um, I'd also like to start off by just saying that um, the Healthy Weight Stream is very much at the brainstorming phase. This is a selection, and, and not all of them, of the potential projects that we've come up with. There's plenty of room for other people to join in, so please get in touch with me if you have any ideas or issues or anything like that that you want to discuss. It's just trying to get an idea of the flavour. By July, we of course have to have a nice, neat little package worked out and handed in, but now's the brainstorming talking sort of time. So both Wayne and Nadine talked this morning about the prediction modelling and the sort of work that's going on behind that. Now we don't know if the prediction modelling is any good yet, and it may not be any good, and that will be fine. But there's also other aspects of this that are also important in terms of what do parents think about prediction modelling. Now we had a lovely uh, vigorous discussion this morning about the deficit model, and no doubt parents won't like a deficit prediction model. But what if we can turn it around? What if it can actually predict health or healthy weight in some of those things? What would parents actually think about that? So Adine talked a little bit about the online questionnaire that's underway that we're working on, but that will also be supplemented with focus group work because we know that online questionnaires are not the best way of reaching all sectors of the population. Also, what are healthcare providers? So our Plunkett nurses, our Fana Aura nurses, many other people working in this space. What's the sort of information that, um, how they interact with parents um, in that first few years of life? All of us, I think, regardless, love a base baby with bracelets. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I think this is a really interesting sort of concept. You start off your life as a new mum or dad, being congratulated every single time you make your baby fatter. So every single time they put on 100 grams or 150 grams or 300 grams, you are patted on the back. So we go into parenthood with this lovely sort of positive weight gain message. And then somewhere between then and a few years, a few decades or whatever down the track, parenting turns into a bad thing for you having an overweight child. Where's the sort of, what's happening sort of in that space? And I think that's a very under, we think that's a very undervalued um, area. So what do well trial providers, how do they view their interactions with parents and whanau about early growth? So to borrow the um, Mitre 10 man's phrase, big is good. That's often the phrase when we think about babies. We like babies with a bit of extra coverage. So what information are they getting? So we're doing quite a lot of work with uh, Plunkett and and um, Fana Ora nurses about that sort of information. Then, if we have some sort of prediction modelling, so if it works, what we're thinking of is some sort of intervention. So does it make a difference to know this information? Hopefully the nice positive prediction model rather than any sort of deficit model. But then what sort of guidance and advice um, is most appropriate? Now, of course, in the sort of weight field, we tend to concentrate on diet and physical activity. In the early space, the early childhood space, the sort of under two space, changing diet and physical activity has actually proven to be virtually impossible. I think obesity researchers going into this area thought that it was going to be much easier, the children were much more malleable, um, new parents would be into this sort of information, and you know, none of those bad habits would be firmly entrenched. But the data don't actually show that that's the case. So this is just an example of five of the sort of big randomised controlled trials around the place that have tried to do a dietary uh, or activity intervention. The diet ones here, the number on the right is the number of nutrition behaviours measured in the study. The one on the left is the number of successes. So i.e. we in Poi found no change to dietary behaviour out of the 11 things we measured. Others found one. It's really tough. And there also, of course, there's a lot of issues and things around the, uh, the nutrition and activity space. Nutrition's very tied up with, uh, with parenting, with culture, a whole variety of things, and can often be viewed quite negatively. Maybe we need to think outside the box. We need to think of some other areas that will resonate uh, with our communities, and a lot of that hopefully, of course, will come from the community. Um, and these are just a couple of examples. 
maternal smoking during pregnancy is actually a really strong risk factor for childhood obesity, and not many people actually know that. So this just presents the results of a recent meta-analysis, and essentially what they're showing is that between one and 15 cigarettes a day, there's quite a linear relationship between maternal smoking during pregnancy and childhood obesity. So each additional cigarette increases the risk of obesity in the ch child later on by 3%. Now, of course, we tend to focus on smoking cessation Nobody looks at maternal smoking during pregnancy in relation to obesity. It's a sort of untapped field, if you like. But even getting maternal smoking down a little bit, theoretically, should make a difference. And here's my sleep hat. Sleep, I think, really should be an area that we could focus on. It's a way forward. Sleep, unlike diet and activity, is quite a nice positive message all of us want to sleep well, and all parents want their child to sleep well. So they're quite receptive um, to sleep measures. So POI was a large um, intervention that was undertaken in Dunedin, New Zealand. It was a very brief sleep intervention. Uh, they were just met with the parents when the women were pregnant in late pregnancy and when the child was three weeks of age. And then obesity outcomes were determined up to five years of age. This is just showing you here that the children who received the sleep intervention had a prevalence of obesity of 5% at five years of age, half that of the children who didn't receive the sleep intervention. So this very brief sleep intervention that really finished in early infancy seemed to have these long-term benefits to children's weight. That's actually virtually unheard of in the child obesity prevention space. We don't see a lot of long-term success. What about technology? We've been told we need to you know, bring in some of this whizzy bang. Um, there's all sorts of potential new techniques that we can use, and wearable cameras is one of them. So this is just an example of two different types of wearable cameras that exist. You can see they're quite small there relative to the pen, and there's lots of different areas that this may have some value in. So for instance, you could combine um, other stuff like GPS data with the pictures that you get from wearable cameras, and you could do some modeling around policy. You know, what would change if we got rid of this in a child's environment? What impact would that have on this? And that could actually span a wide range of areas. You might be interested in alcohol um, uh, advertising, and gambling, and food, and activity, and a whole variety of things. You might be interested in trying to work out what's happening in that pre-sleep pre environment. What's actually sort of, what positive and perhaps less positive behaviours that might actually impact on how well a child sleeps. So this just gives you an idea, and many thanks to Louise Signal and a couple of others for these, of the sort of pictures you get from the wearable camera. So they're worn on the lapel or on the chest or on the head of the little baby that you see down there, and they get the image of what the child is actually exposed to. So there are all sorts of ethical issues, as you might imagine, and those take some time to work through. But you can get very good information on what the child is eating, who they're eating it with, what also is happening in that environment. You might be interested in physical activity and screen time, a whole variety of things. That particular one with the wee baby, we're interested in learning how babies learn to so settle themselves to sleep because that's actually a very good um, predictor of good sleep habits. This is courtesy of Louise. Um, do kids like these wearable camera studies? They sure do. That's a letter that they received uh, from one of the year eight kids that was involved in their kids cam study. So they were very um, happy to be part of that study in this awesome, fun, cool, unique, creative project. What about some community interventions? There's a group, a very big group, in the Hawke's Bay that basically want to really improve child obesity rates in the Hawke's Bay. It's a whole of community approach, um, and there's a massive number of stakeholders that are working in that space. Where a better start could potentially help them is by perhaps providing some leadership if they want it, perhaps providing some intervention input. Again, it depends what they come up with, it depends what they want, um, and perhaps some evaluation expertise so that we can really look at what's working and what's not. And this, of course, is very good potential for the systems approach, the concept that Erica was talking about this morning. Savanti also talked about Whānau Pakari, the program that's sort of in older children and adolescents, that's more of a sort of obesity treatment program. That team have now also developed a preschool option. So there's great opportunities here for partnership between A Better Start and the Taranaki Group to actually advance their preschool program. So again, another thing that's sort of been built from the community up. 
cost of food, muddy, we talked about this morning and that how that was a really overwhelming um, factor, of course. It also came up a lot in the sand pits that we had held around the country um, over the past, at the end of last year. Um, and so there are various things that potentially could work in this space. Smart cards are a bit like a flybys card, and so you would get um, subsidised healthy foods. So there's lots of potential issues around that, maybe acceptability, feasibility, what foods, um, does it actually change behaviour, um, and so on. Now, that's really a, um, a concept that's working in the adult space, but of course, adults hang out in families and whanau with children, so there's flow on potential effects. There was quite a lot from the community about the traditional food sources, about community gardens, about having a more economic, strategic approach to increasing income to allow um, more uh, economic development. So there was quite a big, strong ethos that that was a really critical part of what a better start should be addressing within the healthy weight and, and other streams. We've talked a lot this morning um, about big data and the potential issues with big data um, and how they can be addressed. Um, and one of the, these are just some of the things that have come up as potential possibilities. So for instance, from a very small study in Australian data, we don't think of um, preschool obesity costing the country. And yet they showed very nicely from this um, Healthy Beginning study that it actually costs about three or $400 per year per obese child in Australia. So if you multiply that, that hopefully gives us a bit, of, a bit of bargaining power really for politicians that this actually is costing us. We need to do things to invest in this area. Lots of interest, <coughs> excuse me, in the, in the sort of built environment. So this goes back to those wearable cameras and GPS and some of those other different tools. Can we use technology and combine it with big data and all those different things to actually look at sort of how, we're, how children are living? What environments they're in? Are there any things that we can do there to change those things for the better? Talked a lot about the before school check. It does provide us an opportunity with all the caveats that were discussed this morning to use it as an outcome measure in any evaluations that actually take place. And of course, there's a lot of push that we should be advocating for another childhood measure as Barry and a couple of other people mentioned this morning. We're really trying to get more cross theme um, work going in Tranche 2, and that's a really important part of it. And all of those projects that I've mentioned have the capacity um, to be involved across the projects. And another area, for instance, this is just an example area, is sleep. And sleep fits very nicely across our themes of interest. We know children with short sleep duration have twice the risk of obesity, but short sleep duration is also associated with a whole raft of other things. It's associated with their learning. It's associated with their mental health and their resilience. It's associated with their diet. It increases risky behaviour in adolescence. It's a really um, widespread thing, but it's also something we don't know a lot about sleep in Māori and Pacific communities, and that's a lot of work that's underway at the moment. Is this a good, um, is this a good positive way into helping families? So how does it all to fit together from the healthy weight stream? Well, if we can use, get some novel tools that increase our measurements, then we can get better measurements of outcomes. If we've got better measurements, we can get better understanding of what factors are sort of more relevant or more important. We do need to be trying some different approaches. We need to think outside the box and move away from that thing. We have to have, that's been a recurring theme this morning about greater community input and involvement at all levels of project design in an effort to try and reduce inequity. And hopefully all of those things will lead to the healthier weight that we so desire as part of our challenge. Thanks very much.